the glory of the Lord is in the room today, church. And where his presence is, there's the fullness of joy. Where his presence is, there's abundant life. Where his presence is, there's wisdom. So whenever time you come into the house of the Lord, I don't want us to be able to read or miss. Do you want to sit up here? <laughs> they don't want to sit up here. Uh, imagine it's Green Day. <laughs> But I don't want it to be remiss when we come into the presence of the Lord that we're receiving something from him. But he's also commissioning us every time we leave this place. I, I always think that church is kind of a mountaintop experience. Emotions are high. You're amongst people that believe in faith. Faith is high. But if I'm honest, all the situations of your life, problems, circumstance, meets you right back in your car. And, and, and sometimes the high of what we do in here does not go with us. But the truth of the matter is that the Spirit of God does go with you. He goes before you. He goes around you. And that's the truth. So therefore, we need to align with the truth. When we feel different, we got to align with the truth. Amen, church? Really quick. Uh, Paul, we call him Apostle Paul. And in Acts 16, this is where I'm going to be primarily today, the Apostle Paul, he's a preacher of the gospel, of the, of the salvation of Jesus. And in Acts 16, Paul goes and gets his friends and his mentee. Paul goes and gets Timothy. He, he, he goes and gets Silas. And, and, and Luke, the writer of Acts, he goes and gets him as well. It's like a whole crew that's about to go with Paul. Paul has had an incredible, extraordinary encounter with Jesus. When Paul comes on the scene, it's not that Paul just all of a sudden decides, I'm just going to spread the gospel. Well, you got to understand Paul's background. Paul was an enemy of the Christian movement. He was killing Christians. He was trying to eliminate the movement of Christ that was going all over the Middle East and over into Northwest Africa. He was trying to stomp it out. That was his whole goal and his whole ambition until he has an encounter with God on the road to Damascus. And it changes his whole perspective. And the fire that he has, the passion that he has, is that moment and that experience when he encounters Jesus, he knows, hey, I've got to spread this gospel. See, Paul, Timothy, Silas, they're all in Acts 16, and they have been commissioned by Jesus to go preach the gospel. And let me tell you, Paul and his people, they had plans. <laughs> we got plans. <laughs> when we encounter Jesus and we are kind of gung-ho about the new life that we have in Christ, we got plans. You got plans. And, 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 and just in their, ad, in their uh, idea, they're excited. They are energetic. They are ready to go and take these lands for the kingdom of God <laughs> with the gospel of Jesus. But then they go over to the providence of Asia in Acts 16, 6. And this is very interesting it says that the Holy Spirit prevented them from preaching. Now, I don't know what that looks like. Did, did the Holy Spirit allow them not to communicate or they couldn't put their words together to be able to give this powerful gospel? Or did the people just not listen and they were like, ah, right, bye. I, I don't know, but the Holy Spirit prevented them from preaching in the providence of Asia. So you know what? Paul's like, okay, we can't do it here. Let me go down the ways. Let me go to my Asia. And it says the spirit of Jesus, Luke writes this in there, the spirit of Jesus won't let them even enter into the land. You know, for some of us, we feel like this. We feel like doors close on us all the time. You've been trying hard. You've been trying to save money. You've been trying to apply for that job. And you feel like opportunity and doors close. You've been kind of doing your thing for God, and you've been like, I have an expectation or an idea of how it should go. But every time you take a step, it's like, nope, that situation's not working out. That situation's not working out. And here's the point I want you to remember today. Sometimes God closes doors and opens windows so that you can see his direction. Because you got plans. <laughs> but sometimes your plans are not God's plans. And he's got to let the light in. Come on, somebody say, let the light in. Let the light in so you can see the direction God has 
for you. Let the fire of God light your path. Let the Holy Spirit light your path. Let the light in. Somebody say, let the light in. He's opening up windows today for you to see clearly what he has for you. Paul and his crew, they can't get into Asia. They can't get into my Asia. So they're just going just down the way. And they find themselves in Troas. And while there, Paul has a vision. He has a vision of a man in Macedonia. And that man is telling him, hey, come to Macedonia. We need you here. We need you to preach here. We need you to spread the gospel here. And the scripture says that it was clear this is where the Holy Spirit wanted them to go. And on their way, they met some great people. They met some pivotal characters of the New Testament that spread the gospel of Jesus. It's pivotal that they went this direction. However, trouble comes. And I want to tell you, when you're on the path of God's direction, expect some friction. Expect some opposition. Because if we want the fire of God, we've got to understand friction and fire coincide. Come here, church. Let me tell you something. In order to start a flame, you've got to have some friction. There's got to be some things that rub together that ignite fire. You can't have passion. Fire is purpose, passion, direction, and clarity. And we can't have these things unless we have some friction. Here's a point I want you to remember. Come here, church. You can't produce fire without some provoking. I know sometimes in your life it's like there's some things that are just provoking me and getting on my nerves, but you can't have fire without some provoking. This is what Paul deals with in the scripture. Well, you may say, where is it, Dre? Acts 16 and 16, he says, once when we were going to the place of prayer. See, I'm headed to prayer. I I'm trying to stay saved. I I'm just trying to get to heaven, and there's some friction that comes my way. Come on, somebody. You know, I'm a single man, and the spirit of Lululemon is everywhere. The spirit, come on, some of y'all in here got the spirit of Lululemon on you right now. And it's everywhere. I'm trying to stay saved, and there's friction trying to take my fire. Come on, church. Don't act up. Don't act too saved, young men, single men. Don't act too saved. Y'all know those eyes be rolling. Come on, boys. I know you. <laughs> it says, once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met with a female slave who had a spirit which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us, is what Luke was saying, shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. Now, when I first read this as a kid, I was kind of like, she's telling the truth. She's telling the truth. I, why are you so annoyed by her telling the truth? But you even know, you know, ever have someone that may be saying some good stuff, but it's nagging because it's over and over and over again? Yeah. Maybe some situations that maybe you should be doing and you're just like, I'm just tired of hearing it over and over and over again. And, and I've learned that we could be in the right path, but you're going to have some annoyances, some frictions. How do I know that? We can continue on. It says, she kept this up for many days. <laughs> Talk about being annoyed day after day. Woman, I need you to be quiet. <laughs> Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And at that moment, that means suddenly, the spirit left her. When her owners realized that their hopes of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities, and they beat the mess out of them, and they jailed them. Before I go there, but can I be real? We've got some annoyances. Can I be uh, transparent with y'all? We as pastors, we got some annoyances, and one of those annoyances is the city of Houston. If you don't know our journey, we are in a two year, more than a two year now, journey of getting into our new buildings. A two year journey that we thought was only gonna take three months. And the city of, of Houston, the city of Houston is an annoyance. 
Because every time we get to a place where it's like, bet, we're about to move in, the permits are here, the, 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 the uh, inspections are, are being done, there's always one more thing. We're just like Paul in this situation. There is an annoyance, there's friction. Come on, some place that we thought we were gonna spend this amount of money, but we end up spending this amount of money. And it's not just the church, this is how it is in your life. Your expectations that you had have gone all the way crazy and all hell has broken loose. This is where Paul find themselves in. Paul finds themselves locked up. They're beaten and they're locked up in jail all because he got annoyed from a woman that was telling them the truth, but just doing it in such a way that it was like, my goodness. But you know, um, one thing I've realized is even in these situations, I can't lose my fire. Sometimes you've got to learn to coexist with your conflict. Hear me out, church. Come here. Don't go nowhere. Sometimes you've got to learn to coexist with your conflict. You've got to learn to embrace your friction in order to defeat your faith's frustration. Our faith's frustration is, especially here as a church, if God don't do it, it won't get done. Because for some of us, I want to put some things in my control. I want to go and put some things in what I know, know to do. But in most cases in our lives, things that are out of our control, it won't get done if God don't do it. That is a level of faith that most people don't have. Because we can't wait on the Lord. <laughs> we don't like to wait on the Lord. We want it in our time and we want it in our way. We went to uh, ARC. ARC is Association of Related Churches. And we are an ARC church. We got funding to start Union Houston way back in 2016 through ARC. And we went to the conference not too long ago. I texted Pastor Rod and I said, hey, we hadn't gone in some years. We hadn't gone actually before the pandemic, since before the pandemic. And I said, hey, I think let's go to ARC. I just, I just felt like we just need to be around pastors that are doing the same thing we're doing and, and possibly maybe the same roadblocks that we have. And we went there and... Um, you know, there were some people we didn't want to hear speak. Um, <laughs> don't act up. You, you, some, you, know, you know you come to, I don't want to hear him speak. Some of y'all came today, oh, Dre's preaching, I don't want to hear him speak. <laughs> but we got there, we had some people that we didn't want to hear speak, but man, when they spoke, we realized we are not in this fight alone. You are not in your friction alone. I think you can look around and everybody, I say this all the time, don't I say this? Everybody's much as much but it's much to them, and everybody has friction. But listen, I know the people, they want fire, passion, purpose, direction, but sometimes we don't want the friction. And today, some of your friction today is real. Some of us got the friction of abuse, physical abuse, verbal abuse. We got the friction of that. Some of us are living in the house with the friction of abuse. Some of us got the friction of hurt and rejection. Some of us got the friction of abandonment and broke days, and I got paid, but I'm still broke days. <laughs> Some of us got the friction of heartbreak. Here, come on, lean in, church. To carry the fire of God, I've got to live with my friction. Listen, we can't have glory without having grief. We can't have success without having study. Well, we can't have community without content, and we can't have platform without process. Well, we've got to understand this. God uses trouble to ignite a fire in you. We see this all throughout Scripture. This is where Paul is. God uses trouble to ignite, ignite a fire in you. And if you don't understand this principle, hear me out. Come here, church. Don't go nowhere you're going to mess around and run from the things you should be running to. He uses that trouble to ignite something in you. We know this because the scripture in Romans 8 says, for all things work together for the good, for them that love him and call to his purpose. That means in your situation, in your hurt, it's got to end in good. Come on, whatever your disappointment, it is got to end in good. Whatever your letdown, it's got to end in good. Whatever your pain, it's got to end in good. For all things work together for them that love the Lord and are called to his purpose. That's you today. You didn't even come to church today if that wasn't you. He's calling you to not lose your fire, 
We want to have glory, but we lose the fire when we feel that the friction is still around us. That's one of the things that we battle with. Yesterday, <clears throat> I went and got these speakers from the new building, and um, it was hot, there's no power in the building, but I had to take them down from the ceiling, and uh, we don't have the hydraulic lift that we had that I put them up with, which was easy to put them up, so I had this little A-frame ladder, went up there and took these speakers down by myself, and I'm like, oh, don't fall. I'm too old to recover. <laughs> um, and uh, back in 2022, when you know, we felt things were maybe moving for us, I spent a lot of time in the building just praying and just believing and seeing people being restored in that building, the, the gospel being preached and, and, and lives being changed and community being grown. I had that vision as I would sit in the building in 2022 and then in the beginning of 2023, and then it waned a little bit. I didn't spend that much time in the building anymore because my excitement, my fire kind of waned. It was so much so, uh, Pastor Rod text, we have this text thread that they text too much in. Um, <laughs> listen, don't put me in a text thread, y'all, because I'll be talking too much. I got things to do. But some information that Flo kind of gave us, which was some good information, really good information about the building, and I just kind of put a thumbs up, like, you know, I put the little Negro thumbs up because, you know, I'm dark. It's like, <laughs> you know, some of y'all don't change your emojis. And I'm like, oh, that's not your complexion. That's not your complexion. <laughs> that ain't the right emoji you need to have. <laughs> I quit, I quit. Uh, okay, <laughs> so, okay. Uh, so I just put the thumb up, and then he came back. He's like, if, if you don't get excited, I'm tired of these little thumbs up you're giving. <laughs> so he takes back. And I told him, I was like, I'm I, my faith is there, but my excitement is kind of gone. Because it is, every time we get to a place, it's like a new turn. It's like a new thing that's coming up. And here's what I've learned in this situation. We want to have glory. We want to have the excitement. We want to have all these things, but when we, what we lose is we lose the fire when we feel that the friction is still around. When, 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 the, when the situation is persisting and it's still kind of going on. We lose our excitement in God and what he's called us to do when we feel like we've been in the same place for a long time. We feel like we're not advancing. We, our fire kind of wanes and it kind of dies out when we feel that the friction is going to be with us kind of forever. And it's just going to be like this. When hurt comes our way, when disappointment comes our way, when our hopes have been let down, our fire wanes, our our, our, our the glory that we thought, we diminished the fire within us. And I thought about that when I took these speakers down yesterday. And I sat in the building. God, give me the fire back. The friction is here. I got to live with it. Our situation, it's advancing. We're getting there. But we're not there yet. You've heard us say that plenty of times about the building and for you in your own life. Your situations with your finances, the situations in your marriage, the situations with your children, the friction is there. But sometimes we got to sit and say, God, give me the fire back I once had, the excitement I once had, the hope I once had, the faith I once had. Friction is just as necessary as the fire. The pain is just as necessary as the production. The hurt is just as necessary as your happiness. Tears are just as necessary as the joy. Here's a point I want you to remember. Come here, church. The fire of God is not just the things you glory in, but also the things you suffer through. And this one, I was going to be hard. I'm going to say something that's very tough. This may be why some of you saints can't worship God in the spirit and truth, because you have not suffered through anything. You stop right when the friction is felt. Maybe that's why you can't lift your hands. You can't be expressive. Maybe you can't worship God. Maybe you can't spend time with God in long, long periods of time because you ain't suffered through anything. And I'm telling you, if you suffer through some stuff and you get to the other side, you have a testimony that when God stepped in, he changed everything around. We have a testimony. This is why we got to get used to telling our testimony. Because I made it through the friction. You cannot separate the necessary the necessities of God's will from the difficulty of God's will. David says this, it was good 
for me to be afflicted. King David says this in Psalms, it was good for me to be afflicted. That's weird to say, but it says this, so that I might learn God's decrees for my life. I might learn his direction for my life. It was good that I was afflicted so I might learn. It was good I went through that breakup because I might need to learn. It was good I went through that situation with my family because I might need to learn God's direction for my life. It's good I went bankrupt because I need to learn the direction of God in my life. It's good that I ain't got no money in the bank because I need to learn the direction of God in my life. I know you got pain and disappointment, but you can't stop worshiping God through the friction. I know. I know when it feels like everybody else is joyous, but you're going through hell in your life. It's kind of hard to say worship through it when the feelings are so present. But this is the answer we're given with Paul and Silas. Because I think sometimes when we hear this as a Bible story, we hear that they were just kind of in a cushy prison tied up to the wall. But they weren't. They were chained to the wall. But then their feet were put in stocks. And in that way, I've researched kind of how Romans would do it. They would actually spread their legs until their actually hip sockets would be almost at their limit. And they would lock their legs in it so they could never get comfortable in that position and that's where you are. I get it, you, some of you are just not comfortable where you're at right now. The friction has got you in a place where it's torment. It hurts and I get that, that's real. But it's the friction that you need in order to keep your fire. I wanna prophesy to you, God is doing something even though you've got your friction, your hurt and your pain. Because Paul and Silas, even in Acts 16, sorry, 16 and 25, it says about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. In other translations, singing praises to God. What you got to praise about, Paul and Silas? You're in an uncomfortable position. So much so, your hips are probably almost out of their socket. You, you, you've been there all day, all night, and yet you have breath in your lungs to give God praise. You have breath in your lungs to sing hymns. It's so interesting that even in a situation of torment, they still have a song. You came here to church in your situation, the things you've been worried about, the things that kept you up late at night, the hurt, the pain, but today, church, you still have a song. Yeah. And in that, let me go here, Acts 16 and 25. It says that the other prisoners heard them, and suddenly, suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison was shaken. And at once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone, not just Paul and Silas, let me tell you, your friction is not just for you. Your friction is to free somebody else. Your friction is your testimony that's gonna set somebody else free. And I know in the middle of it, I know that sounds like cliche church talk. Dre, my, my friction is much right now. It hurts. But understand God does not waste anything. He does not waste your pain, your hurt. He frees you so that you can free others. Worship team, you can stand now. All of us, we actually can stand as I end out right now. I wanna ask the church, and this may be not just as a church overall, but maybe you in your individual life, have you lost your fire because the friction is just too much? Have you lost the excitement of the glory of God, of what he has in your life? And maybe you don't know what he has for your life, but have you been through some hurt and some pain and you maybe wondered why? 
I believe everybody that's in the room today and everybody that's watching us online, I believe the friction is what brought you here. You're not here wasting time. You're not here because your wife dragged you here or somebody brought you and said, you're getting up for church. Especially my black people, because we be just like, oh, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You're going to get up for church. <laughs> But you're not here by happenstance. You're here because the friction brought you here. The situations brought you here. And it's for to ignite the fire of God in your life. Let the light in. What is the direction of God has for your life? So I think for many of you guys, as I talk to some of our young adults and our kids, they don't know. But we've got to be open to let the fire of God light the way in us. We got to be open to let the light in and let us see his direction. I know we got plans. We got ways that we want to do things. I know we got our direction that we want to go, but I believe that for some of us, God is shutting those doors off just like for Paul. And he's giving you greater vision of your next step. If you can, just bow your head and close your eyes. If you're in the room today, I don't want to be remiss that in a room like this, there may be somebody that has not made a decision to follow Christ. We talked about this in our group, that God has to be Lord of your life. That means he rules over. That means we surrender, and that's what worship is. It's our devotion. Have you served other gods? Have you worshiped other things? Yeah, you probably have. But maybe you're in this moment and saying, you know what, I'm here, Dre. I want to give my life to Christ, and I want to worship Yahweh, the God of all gods that loves me, the God of all gods that sets me free, the God of all gods that, that, that puts me on a path of victory, purpose, and destiny. That is the fire that I feel in the room. If that's you today, just raise your hand in the room. If that's you today, I just want you to pray a simple prayer and say, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. I know you rose from the dead and defeated the grave so that I can be saved. I thank you, oh God, that we get to do this, that we get to move in your plans, your direction. And today, let there be a catalyst of change. If that was you, just say amen in the, in the house today. Prayer partners, come up. I understand there's friction in your life. This is why we got prayer partners. This is a house that intercedes. It's a house of prayer. And, and, and Prayer is a part of worship, is that we seek God and we speak to God, but sometimes we feel weak and we need somebody else strong in faith to intercede with us. That's what the prayer partners are for. If you've got some friction in your life today and you just need some help to ignite that fire, come and pray with your prayer partners here. Don't be afraid in this moment. The worship team's gonna sing and let's, we're gonna create, create an atmosphere. For everybody else, I wanna say God bless you. May the presence of the Lord go with you. May he show you his face. May he give you his peace and show you his favor.